Hi, I'm Brad Smith. Welcome to my Beersmith tutorial on creating a personal equipment profile. One of the first things you should do when starting to use Beersmith is create an equipment profile that matches your personal brewing equipment. Beersmith uses your equipment profile in many of its internal calculations. We're going to start by selecting the new equipment wizard on the insert menu. The wizard will walk you step by step through how to create an equipment profile. First we name our equipment profile, I'm going to call it Brad's Equipment. Next we enter our batch volume, which I'm going to leave at 5 gallons. And next our fermenter loss, which is simply how much you lose when fermenting the beer between uh, the start of fermentation and the time that you bottle, i.e. it's all the stuff that's left in the bottom. And you'll see that it's actually calculated the bottling volume based on the entries that I entered. So that takes care of fermentation. Now we're going to work backwards from fermentation to determine our boil volume. We'll start with top-up water. Now top-up water is used by extract brewers primarily to add water after they boil to bring the batch up to full size. For example, if you boil in a three-gallon pot, you might use top-up water to bring it up to five gallons, for example. Um, all grain brewers typically leave this as zero, and since I'm an all grain brewer, I'm going to leave it at zero for now. Next, we go to loss the trube and chiller. This is the gunk that's left in the bottom of your pot after you cool it. I usually lose about three quarters of a gallon with my system. So I'm going to add her three quarters of a gallon there. And now we can see that it's actually gone back and calculated the post boil volume that's needed. Uh, to achieve our target volume of five gallons. So we need about almost six gallons after boiling to reach our target volume of five gallons. That includes, includes cooling shrinkage. Now we're going to click on the next button. We next go to the boil volumes and details. So again, we're still working backwards here, but let's start with our boil time. Uh, most people boil for 60 to 90 minutes. I'm going to leave my setting at 60 minutes. Next we have boil off, and it's really good to measure this and determine how much boil off you typically have for a batch. This is how much uh, uh, of the wort evaporates during the boil. I typically lose about three quarters of a gallon, which turns out to be an 11% evaporation rate. So that gives me a boil volume now of 6.73 gallons, and I'm going to let the software calculate that. It's using all the things I already entered to get there. And finally, we have a hop utilization factor, which is primarily for commercial brewers. This should be set for, to 100% for anybody that's a home brewer, because uh, it's usually 100% for items less than 20 gallons. But if you're a commercial brewer, you might actually set that to a larger number, because commercial beers, when you start brewing barrels and barrels, get, uh, get much higher hop utilization. We're going to click on the next button. And now we're onto the mash details for all grain brewers. If you are an extract brewer, you can actually ignore this entire section and just push OK and save your profile now. Um, but for all grain brewers, you actually have to walk through this. So for, I'm an all grain brewer. We're going to start with the brew house efficiency. And this is, a, this is the efficiency for the whole system, including all of your losses into the fermenter. Um, so this number is typically lower than your mash efficiency. You might have a mash efficiency of, say, 80% but your brew house efficiency might only be in the 70% range. I'm going to start with a value of 72%, which is a reasonable starting point. The mash ton volume is simply how large your mash ton is. I have a 5-gallon uh, plastic ton that I use. It's actually a 5-gallon cooler, so I'll leave it at 5 gallons. Uh, the mash ton weight you can enter here. This is used to calculate the thermal mass and help adjust temperatures for your mash ton and compensate for that. I've got a 7-pound mash ton. And the specific heat here, you can see some of the values listed for various types of material. Uh, mine, it happens to be plastic, so I'm going to use the plastic value, which is 0 0.3. And then finally, we have the dead space in the mash ton itself. This is when you actually go to lauder or sparge your, your volume. Um, you've typically got some dead space below the mash ton uh, that you can't pull out. And a lot of times, this is below the screen or below where you drain off the uh, wort. In my case, I've got about a half gallon there, so I'm going to put a half gallon in. And uh, finally, there's an adjust mash volume for dead space, and this is, if you click it, if you have a significant uh, mash dead space, you might want to click this, and what it'll do is it'll add additional water to the first step of the mash to compensate for that. 
I've only got a half gallon. That's not that significant, so I'm going to leave it alone. And finally, I'm going to push OK, and that will actually save my profile. And in fact, if I go to Profiles here and open up the Equipment Profiles, you'll see that Brad's equipment is now listed. And I can double-click on it, and I can edit it, change things if I need to. Uh, but I'm going to leave it as it is. So I'm ready to brew with this. Um, the next thing you might want to do is set that as a default for all of your future recipes. You can do this by going to Preferences or Options on the toolbar here. And you go to Brewing Options, and then you simply go down here to Equipment Profile and select your Equipment Profile. So I'm going to select Brad's Equipment. And you push OK. Now that gets saved in my Brewing Options. And in fact, if I go back and create a new recipe, you will see that Brad's equipment is now selected as the default equipment setting for all future recipes. So I don't even have to remember to set that all the time. It's already set for me. So that's how you create an equipment profile in Beersmith 2. Thank you for listening. If you want to learn more about Beersmith, you can go to our website at beersmith.com, where you can also download a free trial version.